So really thrilled to be back um, and to have you both join us and being your first time on stage. This is very exciting, so uh, no pressure. Um, I, Caroline mentioned that you started just around the corner from here in 2010, July 2010, so nearly four years ago. Amazing things have happened since then, but I want to bring you back to the beginning. What was the initial vision for TechUp? Mike, I'll go to you first. Um, well, I think... Um, we both came at it, at it sort of from sort of parallel lines. I'm, I'm a best known as a journalist, and I've been a journalist since the mid-90s, writing about technology and working for various media outlets. And, uh, and I'd been running around Europe, working mainly, m m pretty, pretty principally for TechCrunch, uh, which is a now a pretty big news, breaking news site about uh, startups and venture capital, but a few years ago was just one of the many technology blogs out there. And I'd been running around looking for, um, looking at kind of clusters, because one of the things that happened in the Silicon Valley was you got this enormous cluster. Mm -hmm. And why were these clusters not developing in Europe? And I, I, had, I had a bit of a, a problem, because wherever I went, uh, uh, something would happen, but then there was only an event, and then people would disperse. And I looked across the across the to the U.S. particularly and saw, you know, this whole co-working movement sort of arise, but it hadn't really been happening in London particularly. And then, um, and I, one of the places I went to, for instance, was Dublin, and they'd sort of set up something called the Digital Hub. And I came back and I started blogging about why why was there nothing here, and a few people sort of came out of the woodwork and said, you know, this is you know a good idea, but you know, you know, we're all happy meeting in pubs and things like that. And then, um, well, and then uh, I'd known Elizabeth uh, for uh, many Ages, years, a yeah. few years, about 10 years. And we'd sort of been running around in similar sort of <coughs> technology scene. Um, Elizabeth was one of the early players in the early dot-com boom of, of around uh, technology, digital media particularly. And we were all friends. So we had lunch mm -hmm. one day in 2009. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, um, and you'd kind of come up with some ideas of your own. Yeah, so I'd been working on ideas around how to bring people together. So I'd done um, a lot of things around uh, communication and events and communities and, and that sort of thing. And I always really liked the idea of creating a, a physical space where people could come together to work and meet each other and mm -hmm. run events and that sort of thing. And so we, we got together for lunch, hadn't seen each other for a bit, and we were both talking about these ideas and I said I really want to do something around this and um, put a put a financial plan together we it was really important to both of us that it be kept as affordable as possible because you know we, you can you can make things um, more plush and, and expensive and, and people will still use them but for us it was really important that the very very early stage uh, companies should have a place where they could come together um, and so we started uh, sort of putting ideas together around this. We talked to people about it and everybody said, yeah, yeah, this sounds like a great idea. Right. Um, and, uh, and, and then we, we sort of announced that we were going to do it. I think it was at a, a TechCrunch event and you said, get up for 60 seconds and just say, you know, we're, we're going to do this thing. And, um, and, and 60 seconds later, I got off the stage and was completely and utterly mobbed completely mobbed. I was three people deep. I went completely hoarse because people are saying, will this be open next week? How much will it cost? And VCs giving me their cards saying, yeah. can we find a lot of startups here? And when is this happening? And we realized, well, people really, really need something like this. So it doesn't surprise me that there was a great deal of interest. I actually lived in the neighborhood. Yeah. I'm Canadian, but I lived <laughs> here around that time. Um, and I remember a digital shortage event where it was actually held uh, on the other side of the wall, of the, of, which is actually not officially shortish. And I thought that's extraordinary that we, would ha we wouldn't have the right kind of space mm -hmm. in shortage to have the digital shortage event. Um, when did you realize, when you started running it, that you were onto something? We knew it before we launched, uh, so we... Well, we, well, we started a viral campaign yeah, which before was we actually had a building. <laughs> yeah, we, we said, um, we, we'd been talking about this idea, people were really excited about it, and so we said, 
uh, tell us in 60 seconds or less on video why you want Tech Hub and on, on YouTube. Uh, on YouTube, and you'll get um, you know you can win a free membership when we open, yeah. and um, and we didn't. We were sort of asked a couple of it people that we knew to do to one, opinion. just just right. in case. And we were inundated with people saying in their <laughs> own words why they needed Tech Hub. And people were incredibly creative about it. People would sort of video themselves being climbed on by their children while trying to work. One guy put his entire office, contents of his office, outside in the snow <laughs> saying, I really need a warm place to work. You know, this would really help me. Yeah. Um, and and another guy did a video of uh, him wandering around aimlessly at bus stops trying to sort of yeah, check his iPhone and like, I wish I had somewhere to go. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that was Tim Morgan yeah, from, Tim Morgan, yeah, from, from Mint. Mint. Um, and, you know, it, a guy did a backwards rap and it was just, it was crazy. And so that was when we realised people really wanted this. And we yeah. also, uh, we, we released a limited number of founder memberships before we had the building, before anything, and right. it was completely oversubscribed. People but really we, wanted I, to support I mean, it. It wasn't just the founders, uh, people, people who wanted it to cap companies, also the investors as well. They <coughs> even got VCs actually posting up YouTube videos in sort of funny continental European accents, just, for, you know, just mucking around almost, just saying, you know, we. Continent Europeans want to get into London yeah. and don't know right. where to go as well. Yeah. And I think the other thing that was going on was that, um, you know, in the conference business, people, you know, go to want to connect, connect with the community via conferences. But you go to conferences, it costs, you know, a thousand pounds or some enormous amounts of money. Really, what you want to do is you want to go to a place where people are there mm. all the time. And I think that was a way we solved that problem to some extent in, in that respect. And how do you think that changed things? Because it's interesting to, to talk about this from the perspective of you know, 2014, because now we're in a situation where the government has launched this Tech City initiative, which is, I guess, itself a few years old. Mm -hmm. um, you have you know, Prince Andrew taking selfies at the palace. Um, it's, it's a totally different world. There's a lot more awareness around startups and um, you know, what it takes to support entrepreneurs. But what do you think Tech Hub in particular did to change the, the community? Um, well, from, I mean, I think that one of the things I think we always felt was that we were going to be um, uh, bringing this whole idea up through the community rather than trying to impose mm -hmm. too much of a kind of a set business model on the idea. You know, we, we set up a viral campaign to get feedback on what was going on out there about what people wanted, and then mm -hmm. that changed out what our ideas about what, what we should mm -hmm. provide as a community space and also for around events and a sort of a whole community atmosphere. Right. And I think, I mean, if you look at what was happening in East London, I think we should, we, we should also talk about what happened in, e in London to some extent, was that, was, you know, you had uh, great meetups happening, but they didn't know where to go. There was nowhere to kind of, to congregate um, other than like, uh, you know, bar pu rooms over pubs and things mm. like yeah. that. And so, so, I mean, you, you kind of, you know, at the end of the, the huge irony, of course, in the tech and the digital space is that actually you do need to meet people in real life and sort of yeah. and talk to them in real life. Yeah, I think it's, um, I, you know, there was always all those stories and people asking questions about uh, Facebook and Twitter and, you know, well, what does this mean? Do we not really have real friends anymore and, and all that sort of thing. But I think, um, like me, a lot of people use a technology as a facilitator for getting together with people. Mm -hmm. I mean, you connect with people um, online, <coughs> but offline connection is still really important. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I think it was, it was about having one place where you could come and find the things you needed and be able to work in an, in an appropriate uh, environment. We um, always said that people just needed coffee, power, Wi-Fi, and each other. And they were the four things. Yeah. That and you maybe needed. a loo. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, if I, I remember in, in the early days, we didn't have a lot of money because we didn't have a lot of uh, capital investment or anything like that. And, um, and I remember saying, well, you know, chairs are kind of expensive. If we have to choose between Wi-Fi or chairs, do you think people will sit on the floor? And it was like, yeah, hands down. I mean, we didn't have to do that. Fortunately, mm. but um, but I think they would have because we had a you know we had a, a hundred megabit fiber line and at the time everyone was like oh my god that's amazing let me add that yeah. I don't, I mean, don't uh, care about uh, that stuff. to support your point I mean tech has gone very mainstream now but <coughs> then it was still we're still you know kind of in the realm of the geek basically right um, so 
you know, we've known each other for a few years. Um, you covered tech for um, some time before that here in London. You actually wrote for the Industry Standard, right? Is that yeah. which is this um, big <laughs> magazine that had a lot of money for a short time. So before it, you were born, <laughs> <laughs> there's a book uh, written about it, which is. Starving to death on two hundred and fifty million dollars. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I and I read through it and I was like, I'm like, for sure, isn't it? I didn't I didn't realize that. How does the current tech scene, or how did the tech scene of say two thousand and ten compare to back then? Was there anything you learned from that that helped you uh, with this venture? Uh, well, I think from, from from our perspective, when we, I mean, very tech hub as a very as a concept very much came out of the developer community and the engineering community. Right. Uh, well, I think one of the things that happened uh, over the last, you know, when Web 2.0 as a phrase started re-emerging around about 2005, uh, was that it was about the fact that in 1998, 1999, 2000, I was, you know, st I was still a tech, you know, just a jobbing technology reporter on magazines and, and newspapers. And I think it, when to do a startup then, you would have to have a lot of money. You would have to buy your own servers, get your own connection, you know, your own ISDN lines, dedicated ISDN lines. No, be, no people just don't even know what ISDN stands for anymore. I mean, it, uh, you had to do all of that stuff, and it was a lot of money, to capital investment, to do a technology startup. Over, it, as a result of things like Linux and the open source movement, um, and, uh, and eventually people thinking about the web as a platform, not just as a place where you put web HTML web pages. We got this whole web today thing happening. And that's where it came from. People suddenly had the tools, the democratizing tools, mm -hmm. to create companies and platforms in their back bedroom. Mm -hmm. And at that point, that the world of work changes immeasurably, mm -hmm. completely changes. And all of a sudden, you don't necessarily need an office in the same way, mm -hmm. you need spaces, you need communities, you don't need offices in the same way. And I think that, that was one of, that's been the fundamental change over the last few years. And how is it working day to day? You mentioned coffee and power, it was interesting because mm -hmm. I was in San Francisco, I guess two years ago, and I interviewed Philip Rosedale, who started Linden Lab, which is the company that, that did Second Life, and he had, when he had another company for a short while called Coffee and Power, mm -hmm. which um, was basically built to support this new way of working through co-working spaces. And he talked a little bit about this being a digital fog, that mobile uh, technology has brought the internet into our everyday lives and it, it surrounds us. Mm. Uh, maybe not sometimes when we're underground, but, uh, but generally. I mean, so I, the idea, I understand the concept of Tech Hub. So how does it work day to day in terms of people working together, but on different projects, on different companies? So. Everybody who comes to Tech Hub uh, is working on something themselves. I mean, it might be a, uh, a small team or sometimes a larger team. Um, our, our Old Street uh, Tech Hub is, is teams from about six to about 30 uh, people. Um, and the thing, the thing that always, the thing that gets me up in the morning, people say, you know, why, why do you do it? Um, is when you walk in and you see a couple of people who probably didn't know each other before they uh, mm -hmm. started um, uh, being a member of Tech Hub, clustered around one laptop or, or one monitor, talking about one of their, their mm -hmm. companies, talking about their product and helping each other out with it. Mm -hmm. And for me, that's really, you know, it's, it's the alchemy that happens in a room. It's, it's, it's you know, things being the sum of more than, than just their parts. And so everybody's working on their own things or you know, the, their, their company's product, but there's this sense that you can ask other people. You can uh, both learn from their specific expertise. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I'm, I'm having a PHP problem over here. You're an expert in that, come and give me a hand. Mm -hmm. um, but also just the experience that's in the room. Because often when you go to events, uh, you hear from people who made it 10 years ago. And right. that's great and it's valuable and, and, and we do those sorts of events as well. But sometimes learning from someone who's six months further on from you is incredibly valuable because they can say, oh yeah, that we had that issue too. You're going to want to do it this way. Don't. It ends up being really expensive and painful. And mm -hmm. here, use this guy. He was amazing. Um, that makes a difference. Uh, the other thing is that 
being an entrepreneur is incredibly, um, it can be incredibly lonely, it can, be, can feel quite isolating because you've quit your job to work on your crazy internet thing and your parents are saying, why the hell have you quit this amazing job to work on your crazy internet thing? And, mm -hmm. uh, and you feel like this is such a massive risk. And being in a room with a hundred other people who are also working on their crazy internet thing, suddenly it feels like I can do this. I can take this risk. It's yes, it's a risk, but it's not that much of a risk because lots of people are trying this. Lots of people are doing it. This is uh, a mindset that I have that has worked for other people and is working for other people. And I want to do this too. And I can be part of something, even mm -hmm. if I'm just working on my own. And are there any examples you can point to of people who've benefited from that? In some, I mean, in terms of a substantial, I don't know, they, they, they reached some milestone or, or some goal through Be, through, through. Well, I remember um, uh, one of our companies, uh, uh, the, the founder saying to me, um, oh, I came in on the weekend. It was, it was the Saturday after the Friday night of one of the legendary Tech Hub birthday parties. Keep an eye out for that coming up in July. They're always really good fun. Um, and, uh, and he said, so I was in the office on Saturday morning. Mm -hmm. He said there was only one other person in because everybody else was completely hung over. And he said, you know, I was too, but I managed to, you know, drag myself in. And it was a guy who sat at the opposite end of the room. And he said, oh, and we'd never met each other, but we both walked in. We're both like, hey. Um, and we got talking and he became um, their CTO and, and okay. invested, I think, uh, in their company. Yeah. And it was the kind of thing where, you know, it's that, that just sort of that serendipity of just you both there at, at the same time on the same day and, mm -hmm. and something more happens with your company than would have otherwise. So there still is an ethos of sharing in the internet community yeah. in, some, one, in some ways. One of, the, one of the kind of like, you know, little sort of things that we, we thought about in the early days was that we kind of wanted to manufacture serendipity. We wanted to create uh, a community in a space where, where serendipity would like really work in your favor. Right. Um, and, uh, and also act as a locus point. But that, I mean, all sorts of funny things happened in the early days and continue to happen even today. When we first started, um, basically the place was empty because we were, we were still kind of a new concept. Right. In the, in the, but but uh, the, it was the era of Silicon Roundabout when Silicon Roundabout was getting big. And we had a, um, a Russian television crew turn oh, up one yeah. day and uh, came and said, the, so Silicon Roundabout, what is this? Are you Silicon Roundabout kind is of thing? Russian? This is my version of Russian. <laughs> and then it ended up, uh, we only had about four people in the space. But we tried to make the space look very full with four people, you know, so like get the cameraman to shoot, you know, from about four people in, in you know, these four people at different angles, you know. And it, and it, it was hilarious, though, because they said uh, after the interview and we asked them when it was going out, they said, oh, yeah, we have 100 million viewers. Yeah. <laughs> on our channel. And so when we watch the thing, of course, we're dubbed in Russian. So we have absolutely no, no, no idea, idea what we're saying. No <laughs> idea what we're saying or what they're saying we're saying. But apparently yeah. 100 million Russians. It went out on Russia today. Took, took yeah. a look at Happier that. Happier times. Yeah. Why, why has this idea <laughs> of Silicon Roundabout or Tech City, wherever you call it, taken off to such an extent? Because, you know, as I mentioned, I think I moved here in 2006. And, and I remember when Richard Moras moved to the building. Mm -hmm. So Richard Moras, the founder of Moo.com, took a, a bill, um, an office on the Old Street Roundabout where he had, he basically, because of the high ceilings, he had to get a big space. And because he had a big space, he had to invite a lot of other companies in. So in a strange way, it was kind of a little bit of a forerunner as a co-working yeah. space. Uh, and that's where uh, Matt Bidolf uh, of Doppler famously coined the term Silicon Roundabout. Um, but it's extraordinary when you think about that you know, that moment, what was going on then, and where we are now. Mm -hmm. Why has this happened, do you think? The, this area, um, it, you know, has traditionally had a lot of artists um, and designers and, and independent restaurateurs and, and shop owners, and those people have a lot in common with entrepreneurs. They're all people who want to do things differently. They want to do their own thing. Um, and so I think there's, you know, been a bit of a sense of, okay, the rents were cheap, no longer, 
but they were <laughs> at one point. Um, and it was a place to come where there was this sense of being independent, right. uh, of doing things differently. And once you get a few companies together mm -hmm. and once you know they're talking to their friends, it's, it's the usual networking thing, you yeah. you just start to accrete more more and more companies. Mm -hmm. I think actually the other thing is that um, uh, technology entrepreneurship can all be, I think you could very well characterize it as 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 much a creative, uh, almost liberal arts movement as much as anything else. Because mm -hmm. I think the creativity that comes out of a lot of startups because they they come up with a product they don't really know what it's for. I mean, who in, when when they invented Twitter. Nobody really thought this would be actually a useful thing in any kind of a way. And that's a similar kind of thing. The Doppler guys, um, or many of the companies that came out of that <coughs> era, they were just inventing things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and that meant that that has that sort of creative feel to it. And, and that, that benefits from this clustering effect. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I remember back in the day when uh, Soho was big for the advertising agency uh, world and what have you. Uh, and, and it's the same sort of thing that happened over here, but it was around technology. Mm -hmm. but, but technology done in a different way. It wasn't the old IT, mm. like IT systems and green screen and terminals and all that kind of thing from back in the day. It was mm -hmm. an actu this is actual creative movement. Mm -hmm. um, so when you started, there was a real need for co-working sp uh, co space in this area, but they've, they've really proliferated since then, uh, both in Shoreditch and, and around the city. So you've got the Trampery, uh, several central working locations. Google Campus um, mm -hmm. has, has a central working, and you're based at, uh, also have a location at, at um, well, Campus London, I should say, sorry. Uh, how do you stay fresh? How, you know, what sets Tech Hub apart from these others? Uh, because there, there is actually a lot of competition right now. We focus on being a community rather than a co-working space. It's more like we're a community with space attached. Space is a tool, like internet is a tool, like, like anything is a tool. And so it's about not focusing on um, the space itself so much, but what happens in it. Mm -hmm. uh, sometimes um, uh, one of the team uh, said, but, you know, we, don't, we don't sell you a desk, we sell you the person you're sat next to and the person that you talk to while you're boiling the kettle and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. And that's what's really important. You can have a desk anywhere, you can work anywhere, um, and, mm -hmm. and lots of people do, and, and it's great, and you can build great companies anywhere. Um, what it is is about having these other people around you, uh, but also having the opportunity <coughs> to access things you might not otherwise be able to access, um, mm -hmm. whether because of financial reasons or just Literally, you, you can't get these things. Mm -hmm. So we get um, some amazing speakers uh, to come in. We sometimes do um, those events that are just members only. We, I remember we did one with Jimmy Wales, uh, you know, founder of Wikipedia, um, that was members only. Um, so getting, you know, being in a room with, you know, 20 other people and, and Jimmy Wales and getting to ask him whatever you want is, um, is a great opportunity that you might not otherwise be able to get. Mm -hmm. Similarly with things like, um, we help quite a number of our companies get great press and PR opportunities because when someone comes in to interview me, we have a chat and then I'm like, come and meet these wonderful mobile companies that we have mm -hmm. who've just been raising money. Um, and so for a very small startup, that can be something really challenging for you to right. gain access to. Uh, yeah. I mean, I think the other thing, I'm sorry <laughs> to interrupt, but no, I, I think the other thing that's done is it solved a real problem for startups that, you know, you get a two, three person startup. So sure, they can go to any co-working space or whatever, but um, Tech Hub's also come up with great team spaces as well. Mm. So it's, it's not just about, uh, you know, just about, you know, being in a big mosh pit, it's about like also getting your own office as well mm. yeah. and solving that kind of just that that headache of getting your own space but still being mm. part of the community mm -hmm. um, and also just cre created a great interface between big companies that want to reach down into Absolutely. this innovation ecosystem um, as well as ones who want to partner with big companies. Yeah, as well. we, we have a no, yeah we have a number of um, uh, of big uh, companies that partner with us. Uh, Google uh, is is the obvious one, um, but also we we work with BT for example. They run uh, programs with us where uh, companies focusing on a particular sort of product theme can then get mentoring and help um, from BT, but mm. also work out how their product can. Uh, work with BT or be promoted via 
BT's, you know, obviously huge um, uh, customer base. Uh, so, you know, if, if you're a if you're a consumer product and you can sort of uh, have BT telling, you know, however many million of their customers, oh yeah, we're now working with these guys uh, to with this amazing product. Mm. That's a great opportunity, and BT gets access to innovation right. that may be challenging for them to do as a large organization. Okay, I just want to ask two final questions before we go to questions from the audience. Um, so this is, this event is sponsored by uh, Thomson Reuters. Now, I haven't referenced them in the, all of the talks before, but it seems relevant here. I used to work for Reuters, obviously, and um, you know I remember uh, the story of uh, you know how it got started. It was like you know. Um, the, big, the Baron, Julius Reuter, uh, you know, traveling around the world and basically creating what became a global brand from London, um, though he was initially German. Uh, how convinced are you, or what, what is the likelihood that another global company can come of one of these types of environments? Do you think that we are fostering the kind of, I don't know, companies that are capable of growing and, and you know, do you have well, any? Well, I mean, I mean, just to speak to that briefly, I mean, um, Elizabeth can tell you that Tech Hub's going to have a good crack at becoming a global brand. But uh, aside from that, I think that um, absolutely, yes. I mean, London is an incredibly international place now. I mean, uh, companies come here all from all over the world, not just to access Europe, but to uh, access the international markets. And similarly, European companies come to London to, to, to go to the US. Uh, and vice versa. The, uh, I think that um, the, the thing about it, I personally, as, certainly as a reporter as well, I also, th also think that we should kind of stop talking about like where we're from uh, necessarily, but just telling us, saying that we're going global from here. Mm -hmm. So we go global from here. We don't, we're not, we're, go we're going to Europe, we're going to, going to the UK, we go global from, from London and from, from Europe. And um, a particular mix of people that you get in London now is incredible. The talent is amazing. And, mm. and so, uh, and I think, that, I mean, I was just having a chat with a venture capitalist only this afternoon along the lines of the amount of business and companies that are going, that are basically going to be much bigger than Silicon Valley over the next few years. And it's not something they're particularly aware of. Um, and, uh, and I think London is a natural place. And, mm. um, uh, I mean, uh, and I think also, you know, uh, the good thing about that entrepreneurship now is also a global movement. I mean, I'm writing a story right now, uh, right now about uh, the technology clusters appearing in Beirut, mm. for instance. I mean, one of the mm -hmm. last places on earth you'd think that technology clusters have come from, but, and that's do totally happening, and, mm -hmm. and the connections being made you know, are you know happening all over the all over the place. And what is your interest in expan expansion? See, because you've been ex expanding, uh, you've got other offices in the UK, so uh, Manchester and Swansea. Is Manchester that right? and Swansea, yep. Uh, and then Riga and Bucharest, and you're Riga moving and to Bangalore and Berlin. Bangalore is happening at the moment. We have some yeah. of our team uh, over there right now, so that'll be opening this summer. Okay. Um, the vision was always. Global domination, really. <laughs> um, I just wanted an office. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the coffee and Wi-Fi. Before we <laughs> even launched, um, we had people emailing us saying, I want to do Tech Hub Oslo. I want to do Tech Hub you know, Mumbai. Um, and it was because people understood the, the concept. Oh, yeah, this would be incredibly useful for um, either, you know, a, a becoming more established tech community in their city, or or a you know a really sort of nascent one, mm -hmm. um, and I mean we we ended up with a, a list of eighty different cities where there were people saying I want to do this with you now. Then that was just in our first year, and keeping up with that was was really challenging because we didn't have the resources. You know mm -hmm. we we opened with uh, you know my painting and you know one sort of front of house person he does physical labor me running around yeah oh, i built all the he's, chairs he's he's yeah he, he's a good chair, well, chair i built guy. all the chairs she built all the tables yeah i learned to weld it's amazing the things that you uh you, that you discover that you can do when uh, when starting a business so and it's really fun actually um but uh I think that I mean we, I think we always we, wanted it to be. I think we we, international. we we didn't really. I think we were slightly taken slightly. I mean, uh, slightly <coughs> taken surprise. I mean, I think you know the whole Silicon Roundabout thing and the Tech City thing that came afterwards, which was you know good fun, and I think it's it's great that they're banging. It's the job of government to bang the drum about entrepreneurship. They should do that totally. Uh, but um, uh, we were sort of taken by surprise 
by how much. And I think it's it's always as, it was the right time, right place, right time. Classically, right place, right time. Part of the zeitgeist, and mm -hmm. and I think this is really the next industrial revolution. And and global technology entrepreneurship also wants to know where to go to meet other entrepreneurs. And I think Tech Hub could totally fill, fulfill that role if it, you know. And it's it's just a, a matter of pushing a, an open door, I think. And mm -hmm. the, yeah, this is we we. What Mike was talking about earlier about going global from somewhere, it's one of the reasons that we want a, you know, a tech hub in every city is because you can build a business from anywhere and most tech entrepreneurs are focusing on, on globalization right from the very beginning. Right. And so we just want to be able to connect people. And mm -hmm. so it's, you know, it's great for us to see people from Riga popping into Tech Hub in London or, or you know, people from Swansea going to Manchester. I brought pictures if you want to. Yeah, that's true, you, actually. I'm sorry. Want. Why don't we look at those we'll before we move to questions? Just, uh, uh, Matt, Matt suggested that, uh, it, you know, it, to, so that people get an idea of, of, of what it These actually look is. Yeah, when compared to the last office, <laughs> Our very first one, we you didn't a have a ceiling. Well, actually, we've, we've, con <laughs> we've continued that motif in, in certain places. I can tell that Mike didn't build any of this. Yeah, no, the first... Mike wasn't involved in... Yeah, the in first one, I, I basically ripped it out, everything out. <laughs> <laughs> um, Had a lot of aggression out there. So, so where yeah, is this? So, this so is just previous, on the roundabout. The previous one, um, uh, Tech Hub Old Street, is on the roundabout, just behind Shoreditch Grind. Um, if you look up when you are uh, on the roundabout, you will see a row of coloured lights. Um, there's no picture of it here. Um, and that's us. There's a big, sort of boring-looking blue glass building. Row of coloured lights. Actually, there's now two rows of colored lights because we've just taken the seventh floor as well as the second floor because 50% of our companies have gotten 50% bigger in the three months since we moved in. So Is that a good thing for you? It's it's a good thing for them, so it's a good thing for us. Oh, uh, okay. Um, it's a bit problematic, though. It's more space all the time is, yeah. is what we're looking for, just trying to okay. keep up with it. So, so is this part of this, you're also still in campus, London? Yep, so we're right. in campus London. We're the, uh, the largest partner um, uh, Along with Google of um, of yeah. Campus London, we have two floors there, and uh, and this is one of them. Okay, great. Uh, nice. So this is Tech Hub in Swansea. They're, this is the whole space doesn't look like this. This is just a little corner. They wanted to to go with the traditional gentleman's club type feel, mm -hmm. which I'm not 100% sure about, but it's certainly comfy. Yeah. Um, uh, this is Tech Hub in Manchester, which was the the second one that we opened in the UK um, after London, but the the third one overall. Mm -hmm. Um, and in Riga, um, they're actually moving into, so Manchester has just moved into a new space, uh, Riga has just moved into a new space as well, mm -hmm. um, and Bucharest is about to move into a new space too, so they're, they're all full uh, at the moment and all, uh, all need more room. And uh, yeah, so that's kind of what it looks like, people getting together, talking about things. Um, I don't think there's been any pictures of the event spaces, but uh, we run events at, at every single Tech Hub because it's a really important part of, of getting people together, getting them to learn things, be inspired, connect. Cool. Well, listen, guys, I want to thank you so much for joining me today. It's really exciting to have this conversation. I've learned a lot. Elizabeth, Mike, Elizabeth Barley, Mike Thank you.